Welcome to the Gold Coast Art Center and the Gold Coast International Film Festival's virtual screening series. Um, my name is Caroline Sarakoff and I'm the festival director of the Gold Coast International Film Festival. And I wanna thank you all for joining us today for my conversation with Carolyn Jones, the director and executive producer, and Lisa Frank, the producer of the inspiring documentary, American Nurse. Now, Carolyn is an award-winning photographer who specializes in telling stories that shed light on issues of global concern. Her first book, Living Proof, Courage in the Face of AIDS, received worldwide acclaim. Carolyn founded the nonprofit 100 People Foundation, which creates educational films and curricula for school children worldwide. Lisa Frank uh, is the director of programs and productions for the 100 People Foundation, and she has traveled the globe to produce award-winning short documentary films on global issues for students worldwide. Welcome. We are honored and grateful to have Carolyn Jones and Lisa Frank with us today from their homes uh, in Brooklyn and Manhattan. Um, to talk with us today about their film, American Nurse. So welcome, Carolyn and Lisa. Thank, Thank you, you so it's... much for having us. So I watched your film for the first time last week. I've always been appreciative of the medical profession. Certainly these days, um, everyone, including myself, is a little bit more aware of what they have to do. So first of all, thank you for making the film and sharing it with us. Well, you're welcome. We're, we're also very grateful because we have, um, you know, a, a big team behind us and a great sponsor that really supported us re-releasing the film and offering it for free during this time. So we're really excited about that. For Sunniest Esk Hobby has been a great partner for us. And of course, Kino Lorber, our distributor, who decided that we could do this now. Um, we're grateful to them. It's a really good time to bring this film back out because nurses have been there working for us all along. It's just right now, we're really focused on them. Right, so so Carolyn, I, I, as I mentioned, you know, you, you are a photographer um, and you started off, at least with this project, being involved with something called the American Nurse Project. Can you tell us a little bit about what that project um, is and how you chose the nurses to be involved with that? Sure, well, a couple of things. Um, at first, I was approached by Fresenius Kabi to do something that would really celebrate nurses. Nurses use a lot of their equipment, they're a medical device company, and they wanted to do something in the beginning to celebrate them. So honestly, Lisa and I worked together on all of this, and we thought, okay, well, you know, we'll, we'll make this book, and we'll get an understanding of nurses, and that will be that, and then we'll go back to running our nonprofit organization, which we love, and that's the idea. But as soon as we hit the road and started looking at some of the issues in our country through the lenses of nurses, that's really what grabbed us, to look at poverty and returning war veterans and the prison system and aging and all of these different issues through that particular lens. So it very quickly became bigger than just this book project that we were doing, which we're very proud of, but that was the beginning. So we decided to call it the American Nurse Project to encompass everything that we're doing with the idea that we really wanna raise the volume on the voices of nursing. Um, it's just, we, you know, we honor the doctors in our lives and we honor so many other people that play so many important roles, but somehow nurses have been really overlooked over the years in just about every way imaginable and they're very easily forgotten. So we really wanted to shine a light on them. And so everything that we do is really very much to that end. Now, when you decided to do um, a film, um, after, you know, or at the, at the process when you were working on the book, how did you decide which nurses you wanted to include? I mean, did you have a script per se of, you know, the types of nurses you wanted to include? Were there types that you couldn't get to participate? I mean, how did that process go? Well, so doing a book first was a bonus, right? Because I had done all of these interviews and met over a hundred nurses all across the country. So when we sat down to really kind of think about who was going to be in this film, um, Lisa had found us this incredible nurse who was a nun in Wisconsin, who was just funny and lively and so wise. And that was kind of a no brainer because you know, we wanted to select nurses that would a little bit blow the lid off our idea of who a nurse is. So get out of the hospital um, and show, we have two men, a, a home hospice nurse in the Appalachian Mountains. You know, we chose that one because 
Really, I think that poverty is hard for us to deal with, and especially when it's in our own backyard. And so we wanted to look at the issue of poverty in our country and what does healthcare look like there, right? So, um, so we chose Jason Short to represent that. And then um, the idea of the military, where you know, I've been thinking a lot about the returning war veterans and with technology as advanced as it is, we're often able to do things now for people that we weren't ever able to do before. So these guys come home having stepped on landmines and missing limbs, and maybe years ago they would have died on the field, but they were just heroes a minute ago. And then they come back and they might need help every day the rest of their lives. So we were pretty focused on that, and we found um, Brian McMillian who could represent military nursing. And then the prison system was just interesting on so many different levels. You know, how do you care for someone who's done something that's really horrible? You know, how are nurses, what kind of quality do nurses have that allows them to get beyond whatever their feeling might be about this person and care for us all equally? And I find that very, very beautiful. And then lastly, we chose Naomi Cross because she was a labor and delivery law, labor and delivery nurse and frankly we just felt like we had a lot of outliers with all these other kind of nurses and nobody was going to be able to relate to just one kind of nurse so um and then her story ended up being so rich because not only is she a labor and delivery nurse but she does perinatal bereavement which is like you know just out of my realm of comprehension of how you find the right words to help parents who have just lost a child so really all in all, we wanted it to represent the country, so be in different parts of the country. Right. So we were on the coast, we were in the middle of America, we were kind of everywhere, urban and rural, really wanted to cover it as well as we could. Um, and we wanted it to be rich and funny and charming, just the way the nurses are, and get their backstory. I was fascinated by what their DNA is. So that's really kind of how we came up with these nurses. I mean, one of the things I thought was particularly interesting about the cross-section of nurses that you chose, and, and I, I really did like that you chose nurses that dealt with patients at various stages of life. I thought that was really interesting as well. Um, but many of them uh, seemed to have, they were drawn to nursing because of a very personal experience that they had had, like a traumatic medical experience with themselves or someone in their family that also open their eyes up to the nursing profession. Um, because you, it, it's true, the way you said, some of these people, they kind of break the stereotype of maybe what some of us think of as nurses, but then you learn why they became nurses. And I'm wondering, are, th are those conversations that you had with them about how they got to nursing? And did that seem to be a common thread with some of the nurses that you interviewed in general? Yeah, you know, we wanted to know how people became nurses. I mean, Lisa will have some light to shed on this as well. I, I think that we got really interested in how they got there. You know, at first, right. I thought they were all like angels or saints or something, because I just thought that, well, they're completely different than I am, being very judgmental. And, you know, I could never do what they do, um, besides just being grossed out because of what they see and smell and deal with on a daily basis. Um, but we really wanted to, I, we were fascinated. Like what, what did bring them into this world? Why choose this really hard job that you never get enough credit for? So right. that's what was kind of driving that. Well, I'd say the funny thing about our process too, is that that absolutely was a common thread amongst probably all of the 200 plus nurses we've now met and interviewed across the country for the project because we would go to each hospital or facility and ask each organization to nominate nurses that were that best represented that organization, but also nurses that might have the strongest stories. We're looking for stories. Right. And so very often the hospitals would say, we have this nurse who is a cancer survivor and is treating cancer patients, or we have a nurse who went through an experience with a family member. So very often those personal experiences were already part of their stories when we did right. even pre-interviews 
you know, before meeting them. But it does seem like that is a common thread for a lot of nurses. We've met so many nurses who were third generation nurses in their families whose grandmothers and mothers and or brothers and sisters right. were all part of that profession. So there were so many of these kinds of stories that we found. And then we really just looked for what rose to the surface. And as Carolyn said, what right. was really entertaining. But, you know, the other piece of it is that now we feel so excited that we see nurses on the news. This wasn't yeah. happening when we started this project in 2012. The only representation of nurses in the media that we had were Nurse Jackie, you know, um, right. ER, right? Okay. These kinds of TV shows. And you'd talk to nurses and they're like, you know, we just want to see some truth. You know, that's not really true to my experience. And even if it was true to somebody's experience, it was very specific to that hospital setting. So as Carolyn mentioned, you know, we wanted to, to break through that expectation and really show what does nursing actually look like? And it looks like all these different things. So were there, uh, you were filming in some pretty uh, restricted areas, I would say. Were there challenges with filming in those types of locations to get the kind of um, real footage that you wanted to get? That is all Lisa. She makes some magic happen. I got to tell you, it could not be done without what she goes through to get us in there. So Lisa, you take no, that. I mean, it's such a, it is such a team effort. I mean, I'll give you an example because we all have to work magic in our various ways, but um, you'll see in the film, there's this scene where Jason Short in the Appalachian Mountains is driving literally up a creek that had been flooded right. because of top of the mountain mining. We were in that car with, with Jason. Um, our cameraman, Jakob Insek, who has been through this whole journey, we've been all working together for over a decade at this point. Um, he got out of the car so he could film, film it. Carolyn and I were ducking down so you couldn't see us in the shot in the car. And then we got stuck in the creek. We hit some, a rock. <laughs> so, so Carolyn and I mean, so Jakob is out of the car with Jason, the nurse taking the fender off of the car so we could get unstuck in the middle of this creek in the Appalachian Mountains. So just as one example, I mean, it really takes a village um, to be able right. to make this stuff happen. So when you first showed the film to the nurses that participated in the film, um, what was their reaction to it? Or, you know, what, was there a one large screening where you brought them all together? Um, did they each want to watch it kind of in their, in their personal a personal setting, how, how, how was that when you, when you shared the final project with the, the nurses who were involved? Well, I, I will say this is a very, very humble bunch. I mean, they don't really like to toot their own horn at all. It, it, it's just, it's part and parcel to being a nurse to be really kind of have a massive amount of humility. So no one called us, you know, we, we send people footage and, and there were moments where um, it was Naomi in particular, I remember a moment where she was like, I'm not sure I should say that and should I? And we kind of went back and forth that way. But the real moment happened because the American Nurses Foundation brought everybody together for the premiere in Washington, D.C. Oh, so it was, it was the first and only time that they had all met, that the nurses from the film oh. had all met. And it was so wonderful. And heartwarming and I think they were all kind of overwhelmed by seeing themselves up on the big screen with like 300 people in the audience um, but it was it, I think they really felt celebrated so I and for that I'm really grateful and we're still in touch with all of them uh, in fact we've just been um, kind of catching up with everybody and seeing what's going on during COVID-19 in the different places of the country where they are so uh, yeah I feel like they're family I, that was actually my yeah. next question. If you've been remains in touch with them, particularly now, I mean, are there any stories that you've learned from them that kind of shed some light on what they're going through wherever they might be? Yeah, and you know, it's it's as different and as as the country is. Frankly, Jason Short comes to mind because I just spoke to him. So he's in the Appalachian Mountains, right? right. And and where he is, uh, he's been working as an emergency room nurse for the last four years. 
and where he is, it, it, COVID-19 hasn't hit really hard and you right. can't get tested unless you've come in contact with someone. I think now they're changing this, but as of a week ago, you couldn't get tested unless you'd come in contact with someone and nobody had come in contact with anybody. But in preparation for testing, the hospital had put a big tent outside the entrance to the emergency department, um, a big white tent that you would go through and get tested in. And in that particular part of our country, there were a lot of people that just, and, and I think this is happening everywhere, just said, I'm not going to the emergency room. I don't care what's wrong with me, but I'm not going through right. that tent. And there was a lot of fear about that. So the, the weird byproduct of all of this is that, um, Jason has been in there working with patients that he was pretty sure had it, but there was no way to test them. And, and now, because no one's coming into the emergency department, he just uh, was told that he had 90 days before he had to oh. before be let go. And, you know, we're talking about a lot about the uh, protective equipment for nurses and we're talking about them running towards the fire and not away from it and, and, and all the work that they're doing. But this is a phenomena that's also happening. We're asking them to risk their lives. And then in a lot of the parts of the country, since people don't want to go to the emergency department right now, they don't have enough business, if right, you will, right. and nurses are getting let go. Did when when you were making this project, I mean, did you find that there was those kind of differences between all the nurses that you're interviewing where th this was a problem when you were making the film or is it something that's more being highlighted now? I think it's really being, maybe it's the contrast right now that makes it so dramatic, you know, that we're asking so yeah. much, but, and, and they don't have the right equipment and then we're gonna let them go. I mean, it, it's just like a double yeah. whammy. No, uh, I didn't so much. Yeah. Yeah, this is definitely a phenomenon related to this pandemic because at the time when we did this project, every place we went, they needed more nurses. They couldn't right. get enough nurses into the pipeline. There weren't enough nursing teachers to get enough students through nursing school. I mean, all we kept hearing about was this nursing shortage. And now all of a sudden it's this imbalance. We just heard stories of nurses in emergency departments in other parts of the country where they can't get enough hours or they're about to lose their jobs. So they're volunteering to come to New York City or to right, come to right. New Jersey you know, to work in this crisis, um, which is wonderful and we need that, right? But it's, it's also terrifying to think that that's for financial reasons that they're being forced into that decision, right. not necessarily because that's what they would have chosen. Have, have you found in this time, because of your connection to the project, that you have wanted to or that you have wanted to interview nurses now um, that maybe weren't involved in the project, but, you know, I, I would think that maybe you would have this desire to run into a hospital and say, you know, how can I help her? Can I tell your story? I mean, ha has, how has that been going for you? Oh, my gosh. You have no idea. I think I talk about this every single day. I wake up and beg Lisa to try to get me in somewhere. Right. Um, when they first started working at the Javits Center, I said, you know, I just want to see them build all that and then see what right. happens. Um, so we, I started off thinking that I wanted to tell news stories, but you know, look, to get into an emergency department right now, you're going to have to take your, the personal gear from someone, right? So someone's yeah. not going to have that protective gear that they're going to give to our team. Um, I mean, I would be happy to get it myself, take it in, but they have protocols of things that they want to use in each hospital. Um, so there's that. And also when you take a team in, it's complicated for them. You know, they have yeah. to, someone has to kind of be with you. They don't just kind of, you know, let you go willy nilly through the hospital. And, um, but I have been really focused on this. And we have a, a new film that was supposed to come out in May that's now going to come out in October where we filmed in emergency departments across the country for the last two oh. years. Also kind of a crazy, harrowing, fascinating place to be. Um, and one of the hospitals that we filmed in was in Patterson, New Jersey, St. Joseph's Hospital. So Lisa, poor Lisa, every day I'm like, can we go back and I get in there and film um, to either talk to nurses that are on the front lines right now in the emergency departments. We are really, really eager to do that. Uh, it's just not an easy thing to pull right. off. That's for sure. So with these, both of these films that, you, that you've just, American Nurse and, and the new film that you were talking about, they're, 
they're obviously both about the medical profession. And I'm curious if either of you had any back in medicine or, or what your experiences were with that profession that drew you to working on these projects. Well, so um, I'll start in by saying that I, I did a book a number of years ago called Living Proof, Courage in the Face of AIDS. And that was a book uh, that was focused on the photographs and stories of 78 people who were living in New York City with HIV and AIDS. And this was during a time when uh, we hadn't, we didn't have a drug cocktail yet that was going to make this right. a more manageable illness. So um, everybody knew that they were going to die. And, uh, and it made for an unbelievably compelling year. You know, people would ask me all the time, oh, isn't that so sad to work on that project? Well, it wasn't, it, because life was so vibrant. And when you think about your own mortality, um, life itself just gets more colorful and more vibrant. And I was really drawn in by that. And I learned a lot from that. So I think in my career, I've always been trying to find a way to get back to that kind of place where the senses are so in tune and, and everything's heightened. And so I had, um, when I had breast cancer a few years ago and I had an incredible nurse and just even the whole experience of having breast cancer and thinking about your mortality um, kind of brought me back to that place. But then this woman was amazing. Her name's Joanne Staha and she truly got me through it all with um, some amount of grace, I think. And I was so, so grateful. And I always kind of wondered how she knew all the right things to say to me. It seemed right. like she had really advanced emotional intelligence that I don't have. And so when I was asked to do a book about nurses, I really jumped at the opportunity because I knew it would give me a chance to dig in on a profession that I thought was really compelling. Did you think about including her in the film? Uh, she's in the book. Oh, oh okay. Got it. Yeah, yeah, she is. Um, as you and guys, she's mentioned in the introduction to the film, so she she gets a little shout out she's there. She's in the there somehow, right? <laughs> yeah, she gets a um, shout out. All right. Um, as you as you were making Lisa. the film, oh, I'm sorry. Continue. I was just going to say, Lisa's mother-in-law is a doctor, and I think she's actually closer somehow to the whole medical profession in a way than any of us. Do you want to talk about that at all, Lisa? Um, well, that has probably had a bigger influence on our second and our third project because I've had my mother-in-law to bounce ideas off of, and she's based at a hospital in the Bronx, so she was able to help us with a couple of introductions for the projects, which obviously, you know, having that inside track is always, is always helpful. Um, but for me, you know, my background has nothing to do with the medical profession at all, but it's in, you know, storytelling and writing these stories and figuring out how best to tell the story. And it was just so clear early on when Carolyn and I started the American Nurse Book Project um, that these are stories that the, the public just don't get to hear. We never hear about nurses in this way. So it was obvious to us from early on that this was a new lens and a new way of thinking about things. And as documentary, you know, when you're working on a documentary, that's your chance to show this slice of life that the public doesn't see. Um, so it just felt like a really new window. And, and so there were just more and more stories to tell. So once we got that ball rolling, um, we, we weren't ready to pull ourselves away from nursing. So while you were working on the project, was there anything surprising that you learned about nurses uh, throughout the process? I mean, when you come at it from where we were at, which is knowing nothing, every day was really surprising. I, I was flabbergasted at the way they could just get beyond whatever was going on to just go in. And, and in the middle of mayhem, they would find these kind of very beautiful moments of humanity. I've been struck by that through all the projects that we've done that have anything to do with nursing. It's just, it's like a crystallized moment that is so rich and means so much. Um, you know, people think that, and this was a big surprise to me because honestly, when we started this project, I really did think nurses were like, they took your temperature and they took your blood pressure right. and then, you know, you're waiting for the doctor to come in. Um, and I didn't really have a good sense of who they are. I had no idea 
how deep their their education is and what they knew and what they know and what they're capable of. I had no idea. So that was very surprising. But see them in these different settings gave us a chance to see how autonomous they can be. And we were able in, in a lot of instances to see nurses practice to the full extent of their education. And that was powerful. I, I come back to Jason, who's actually hanging on my back wall here <laughs> from that film. Um, I, I, I have a big warm spot in my heart for Jason, but we watched him care for a gentleman and and since he was the only one who could get to him because he was at the other end of that creek, um, he was like the, he was the nurse, but he was also the doctor and the chaplain and the social worker and the physical therapist all wrapped up into one because no one else was going to be able to get to this guy. And I thought, you know, this toolbox that nurses have is, is much more varied and much deeper than I ever knew. So that was the biggest surprise. And it made me end up feeling that they're just like they're these treasures that we have in society that we have somewhat overlooked and certainly not gone to for um, the amount of wisdom that they can offer us. And I think the biggest surprise for me, which it, sh it should be intuitive, but it's the communication ability. Um, we think of doctors as the ones that are there to impart the information and tell us what our prognosis is and explain what we're supposed to do with whatever's going on. But in fact, what we saw so many times was that the nurses are the ones that are communicating it in a way that people can actually get and really answer their questions. And I then had, you know, in the midst of this project, I had a couple of personal experiences. I had my own children. Um, so I had experiences where it really was the nurse that was right. able to help me understand what was going on, not the doctor. My, I was with my sister for a medical situation. And once again, the doctor was very confusing and nothing against doctors. But in that situation, it was a nurse that actually was able to get the information through to her in a way that she could hear it and understand it. So I really think they have this gift of understanding us emotionally and being able to empathize with us that they can then figure out how best to communicate the information so we can really hear it. I was just going to say there's there's this thing that we don't think about that they look at us holistically and they're probably the only person on the chain that isn't looking at like one part of our body or thinking about one aspect of us getting better. They kind of assess the whole situation. Who does this person have um, in terms of family members for support if they do that surgery or they take that procedure? Will they have the help that they need and how do they fit into their community and what kind of lifestyle do they have? So they really have this very, very unique perspective. I unfortunately shared, you know, what you were talking about, um, the same view that, you know, nurses mm -hmm. take your temperature, they take your blood and, mm -hmm. and yes, they do that, but they do so much more. And I think that that's one of the things that I appreciated from watching your film and really seeing what nurses are doing in all of these incredibly difficult situations. And hopefully now more and more people will continue to see the film and, and, and have a deeper appreciation for, for the stories that you're highlighting and, and the types of, of, of work that they do that truly is essential. That is the dream. Right. That is that's the dream is to have people kind of recognize, you know, they were there all along. There's they're there right now. They're covered up in a lot of protective gear, but they're there and they're going to be there when this is all over. And if there's you know, if there's anything that we can do to kind of acknowledge, I think we're living in a time in our country right now where. Um, I just feel like decency is in somewhat short supply. And, and this happens to be a group of people that have just an enormous amount of empathy and decency to share. So I really hope that when we get to the other side of this pandemic, that there's kind of a mindset change about who nurses are and what they do for us. That's our dream anyway. Can you tell us a little bit about your foundation, the 100 People Foundation? Sure, I'm gonna let Lisa talk about it. Well, Carolyn started the 100 People Foundation probably about 12 or 15 years ago now. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen the statistics, what would the world look like if it were 100 people? So you're looking at percentages. So rather than looking at 7.5 billion people around right. the world, you would say, okay, there are 50 men and 50 women. There are 60 people who come from Asia. 
Uh, there are only five people who come from North America if the world were 100 people. And then you're asking about different resources and how many people have access to clean drinking water out of 100 and how many people right. have electricity out of 100. And so it's this really simplified lens of looking at the world. And then we've used that as a jumping off point to teach students about different global issues. So we have lesson plans and videos for students um, that are used in schools all around the world uh, to connect with their global neighbors and understand a little bit more about their local community, uh, tell their own stories with photographs and written stories of people that they admire in their community, and then find out about people from other parts of the world. So it, in a funny way, everything we, we do and all of our other projects um, at their core, I think have some connection to the 100 People Project uh, because it's really about individual stories connecting us to the whole and helping us have empathy for our global neighbors. Well, certainly uh, for anyone who's watching this, uh, we'll make sure that we put on our website you know, links to, to your sites and such so they can learn more, not only about the American Nurse Project and your upcoming projects, but the 100 People Foundation as well. Um, and they can share it uh, with their friends and neighbors. We're gonna wrap up now. Um, we've taken a lot of your time today and we're very, very appreciative of it. Uh, Carolyn and Lisa, we're so grateful for your film, for the opportunity to ask you some more questions about the making of this, uh, this film and the American Nurse Project. And please, please keep us uh, up to date on what's going on with your next film and, and, and your projects in the future as, as we would love to support what you're doing and share them with our audiences. Um, for anyone who is interested in all of the things that the Gold Coast Art Center and the Gold Coast International Film Festival are doing uh, virtually right now, you can visit us on our website at goldcoastarts.org. And so uh, lastly, just thank you again, Carolyn and Lisa, and stay healthy. Thank you, you too. Thank you so much, Caroline. Have a good day. Thanks.